This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Well, she was loud. Anyhow, <laughs> they change that stuff every now and then. Sometimes you don't hear it, then you have it. So we just want to say uh, welcome, everyone, for our, um, as we have started the new month and uh, Bible study. And we're coming from um, the book of James. And so tonight, Tiffany will be starting us off uh, in our Bible study. I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then I'm going to turn it over to her to let her lead us in what she has for us today. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you today for allowing us the opportunity to come together. So, Father, we ask that you would uh, uh, lead us in this, in this study, excuse me, of your word. Help us to glean some, some knowledge and some, some information from the, the lesson so that it can help us as we continue to walk out our journey with you. So, Father, we just say thank you and have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Miss Tiffany, you can take it over. Take it away. All right. <laughs> um, once again, good evening, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about um, the pressure of trials. It's coming from James 1, verses 1 through 4. I'm just going to read that um, verse, verses again. Um, this letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So um, first, I want to just talk about what do uh, what is pressure and what is a trial. Um, and so, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, um, pressure is the burden of physical or mental distress. Um, some synonyms for that is strain, tension, stress, and force. And the opposite of that is relaxation, ease, and peace. So when we also look at the word trial. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it's defined as a test of faith, patience, or stamina through subjection to suffering or temptation, or um, thing that tests, try out, experiment, hardship, fire, adversity, tribulation, tragedy, misfortune, Grievance. Those are um, some synonyms and some opposite um, antonyms of those uh, for trial is joy, pleasure, and delight. And so when we think about the, the pressure of trials, we want to think about how can we show up during these trials within our life. So in life, we are faced with hardships, trials, and tribulations. Life has many ups and downs. And as Christians, we are faced with life's disappointments discouragements, difficulties, and adversity. It is through these obstacles or trials that we learn important lessons. Lessons that will teach us, lessons that will help us, lessons to motivate us, lessons to help us to grow, or lessons that will cultivate, cultivate sorry, us to our next. We often wonder these questions as we go through these trials and tribulations, right? Why do we have to go through different trials? Why me? Why did I do, what did I do to get to this place? And how can I get out of this situation? So in all of that, when we think about the pressure of trials, we're thinking also about what types of trials do Christians usually go through? And according to IBLP.org, there are a few that are uh, trials that Christians go through. One is fiery trials. These trials are intense encounters or struggles, bursts of anger, grief, or lust. Um, in other words, we're, um, we're going through a things of testing, refining, purifying, sanctifying, and all of this is for God's people. Um, another trial type of trial is infirmities. Those can be defined as physical limitations or even illnesses that 
our um, people go through when we talk about trials. Reproaches, that's um, considered as red ridicule and rejection on account of faith or holiness. Persecution, this is um, also an example of like things like harassment and oppression due to religious convictions or in even belief, religious beliefs. Necessities, that's an example of like wear and care of daily responsibilities, the wear and care of like the world and things of that sort. Distresses, disappointments and deep hurts. Tribulations, unusual pressures and challenges. And finally, temptations, opportunities to yield to our sinful nature. So before we move on, um, and I just I got through talking about the types of trials and even defining uh, trials, how can we show up during trials within our life? How do you think we can show up for trials in our life? Can you repeat the question? Um, how can we show up uh, when we face trials in our life? Like from a positive? Because I could show up any kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, either one, but more so like a, um, yeah, either one. If you want <laughs> so I, I will say this. Some, I know that I am getting better at how I show up. So and like, for example, with like distresses, maybe like a year or so ago, when things would be distressing, it would be really frustrating. And so I would kind of kind of spiral out like, oh, why is this happening? Like you, like you had said earlier, you know, why is this happening to me? I'm trying to do everything right, blah, 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 and kind of go down this why me pity party almost. But now... Like even more recently, like I've had things where I've felt distressed, but I was like, okay, let me take a deep breath. Let me, you know, focus on what am I telling myself? Like, is is what I'm telling myself true? Like, even, even if the situation is quote unquote bad, like what am I telling myself about the situation? Like, you know, if something's going wrong, it doesn't mean I'm going wrong or I'm bad or I'm this and this. And so kind of, talking to myself and giving myself a moment to process the emotion, but then saying, okay, well, what's the truth about the situation helps me to show up better in the trial and then be like, okay, this may not be fun, but like, okay, God, God gave me a promise that I ha I don't see yet. So if I don't see it, then I need to know that he's going to do something, however it may be to work out the situation. So that's like, um, that's how I'm trying to show up in trials now is to remind myself that no matter what it looks like, if God has given me a word or a truth about a situation that I need to go back to that instead of what I feel in the moment. So it sounds like, like how you were before versus now there's like growth. That's what I'm hearing, like growth within how you face um, trials now. And that's a good yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I have to say, kind of really the same thing that um, Jocelyn said. It's really, um, you know, initially, your initial response sometimes is one of woe or wait or panic or you know, distress, but then it's, uh, okay, let me stop. Let me look at the situation. Let me pray about it. Let me get, you know, counsel from the Holy Spirit as well as, you know, counsel from, or additional prayer from those that are around me. Um, and then deal with and approach whatever that is 
you know, the, with, with God's help and, and um, instruction. But I think it is, it's kind of hard. That first initial, your first initial response is going to be a human response. Cause it's going to be like, wait, what? Um, but then, you know, as you grow, I think even what Josh was saying, as you grow, you learn how to have that human moment, but then quickly kind of compose yourself and then ask the Lord, you know, for his help. Yeah. So it's like it is in our human nature. Like it's hard because we're um, looking at the circumstance, like um, in the natural, but it's more, uh, more so like thinking about like in the spiritual, like depending on like God's word and his truth. Like it was said, you know, Jocelyn said to just depend on that to move forward and knowing that he's going to um, keep on this promise. Amen. Yeah, and Pastor James said a trial can be a learning opportunity. Yeah, I agree with what, with everyone with, with what everyone said, and and believe that also <clears throat> if you have an opportunity to move beyond like the initial uh, emotional response, that it can be a learning opportunity because typically a trial is something that's it's not what we expect, it's not what we hoped for. And that requires us to maybe take a different perspective because typically a trial is like a trial. So if it's negative, it's like, oh, this is not something that is really good for me or for people that I love or people that are around me. Um, but typically it's like me, you know, it hits us personally. And once you are able to kind of process that, it can be a learning opportunity of how to even approach it or how to manage it or how to deal with it from a different, you know, from a different perspective so that you don't get stuck essentially. Amen. And then Jocelyn wrote, humans deal in the moment, God deals in eternity. So we have to shift our focus. I'll keep that, write that, text yep. that back to me. She said, humans, like humans deal in the moment, God deals in eternity, so we have to shift our focus. Oh, no, I was saying, oh, can't you text that to my phone? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's good. I oh, yeah, that's you know. she can text that to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All of these are good when we think about trials. And so we're going to um, move forth and thinking about why do trials happen? Why do they even happen? So according to the same website, iblp.org, as you mature in your faith, God uses tests and trials to develop your character and ministry. By responding to trials and the grace of God, you will experience the power of God's spirit, which will be manifested in your life through the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and self-control and all of those um can be found in galatians 5 verse, verses 22 through 23 and so we also we think about why it's also why do trials happen because it also helps us to draw us closer to god it helps us to rely upon him and to develop our trust and our faith in him and not to rely on so much not to rely upon ourselves um, a verse that we can think about in terms of this is 1 Peter 4, verses 12 through 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is, try it, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ, Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So, and that is just thinking about why uh, trials happen is for us to go through it and to rejoice in it. Um, and when you think about rejoicing in it, like that godly rejoicing. So an example of a trial um, that we're gonna uh, look further into is Genesis 37 verses 18 through 20 in the NLT. It says, when Joseph's brother saw him coming, 
they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of, one of those cisterns. We can tell our father, a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. In Genesis 50, verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to, his, to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So just in those verses, Joseph believed, even though these things were happening to him, he was going through all these trials uh, in terms of his brothers, his own, his, his own siblings, his flesh and blood, he still believed in the promises of God. He didn't waver. He didn't, um, you know, go to and fro. He just, he just continued to believe in the promises of God because he believed that everything worked out for, everything will work out for a good. And he, he, he was trusting in God's word to see him through. According to at Christians want to know, Dot com, Joseph was, and this is just like a synopsis of like the whole thing. Um, Joseph was sold into Egyptian slavery by his brothers. Though he had earned his master's trust and was allowed to work freely in the house, the lives of a woman thrust jo Joseph into prison. God granted Joseph an understanding of dreams while he was unjustly seeing his, his time, seeing his uh, at this time. Joseph interpreted a dream one day, which could have been his way out of jail, but the man who should have spoken for Joseph's freedom, he um, freed him for about him for two years. When Joseph was released from prison, it was to take an elevated position in the government. Joseph knew the region would go through a devastating drought. He made preparations to help save the people. In doing so, he was able to rescue his brothers who had treated him so badly. Joseph trusted in the promises of God. He knew that God had a plan for his life. Joseph endured the difficulties because of his faith in God's word. Give me one moment, I'm sorry. So now we're going to take a look at how can we show up. I know we talked about that um, before, but we're going to go more into depth about how we can show up or even respond in the midst of trials or tribulations. Now, how we, how we show up or respond to trials is very important, right? It makes a difference in your spiritual well-being and character. And so when we think about how we respond or show up, there's a few things that we can do in order to show up properly or to respond properly when facing trials. First, we want to remember to give thanks. God wants us to give thanks in all circumstances. It is in our human nature or flesh to complain about circumstances that are not pleasing, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, or even mental. However, we have to push past our emotions and rest upon God's grace, will, and understanding. Now, giving thanks doesn't mean that we are thinking that the trial we are facing will be perfect, like it's going to have a perfect ending, that we are happy or joyful about it, or even that we like it. Giving thanks means we are acknowledging that even in the midst of the storm, we are trusting God and we are trusting in God's word. Giving thanks mean we are enduring and persevering through the obstacles, through the storms, through the hurt and through the pain. Why? Because we trust and have faith in God's word that he will fulfill his promises. And so when we think about all that was said, we're taking a look at 1 Thessalonians. 5 verses 18 in the NLT version. It says, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 verses 13 through 14 in the NLT. For God is working in you, giving you the eyesore and the power to do what pleases him. 
do everything without complaining and arguing. And finally, Romans 8, verse 28 in the NLT. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Another thing that we want to do and remember is to rejoice. How can we rejoice when trials come? According to IBLP.org, thanking God is an act of the will, but rejoicing is a response to of the spirit. Therefore, it is possible to be sad and joyful at the same time. We cannot escape. We cannot escape the pain of a difficult situation, but we can learn to rejoice in God himself and in the good things God will do through our suffering. Philippians 4 verses 4 in the NLT, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. How can a person consider trouble as an opportunity for joy? This is a remarkable command. We are to choose to be joyful in situations where joy would naturally be our last response. When certain circumstances make us angry and we want to blame the Lord, James directs us to the healthier alternative, and that is joy. Those who trust in God ought to exhibit a dramatically different positive response to the difficult events of life. Our attitude is to be one of genuine rejoicing. This is not joyful anticipation for trials. Instead, it is joy during trials. The joy is based on confidence in the outcome of the trial. It is the startling realization that trials represent the possibility of growth. In contrast, most people are happy when they escape trials. But James encourages us to have pure joy in the very face of trials. James is not encouraging believers to pretend to be happy. Rejoicing goes beyond happiness. Happiness centers on earthly circumstances and how well things are going here in the immediate moment. Joy centers on God and his presence in our experience. So another thing that we want to think about when we're facing trials and how we can show up is stand on or believe and act on the word, on the word or God's truth. When you are being tested, rely upon the word of God as your help. Ephesians 6, 17 in the NLT version states, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we always have to go back to the word of God. Because the word of God is the truth, it's everlasting, and it's what we have to stand on. Hebrews 4, 12 in the NLT says, the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Another thing that we want to do when we're trying to show up or respond in trials is come to God with your concerns and burdens. Cry out to him. We must be able to rely, call upon, and, de and depend on God to fight for us, to defend us, to help us. He is our source of strength. He is our help. He is our protector, our protection, and defense. God is our very stronghold our strong tower, and our great defender in the midst of our battles and trials. Psalm 50 verse 15 in the NLT states, then call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. Now, let me say this. I know that sometimes it can be hard. Sometimes we may not feel like we want to call out to God or want to like trouble him, but he wants us to come to him with his, with our burdens because he wants to help us and he wants us to grow. He wants us to go grow spiritually and he wants us to be able to face those trials and tribulations. He don't want us to face them alone.
another thing that we want to do is overcome evil with good. In Matthew 5, verse 44, in the NLT, it states, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. So you want to be able to love on your enemies. You want to be able to um, have them to like pray for them. And I know that could be, I know that could be hard, but that's what, you know, God requires of us. And Romans 12, 21 in the NLT says, don't let evil conquer you but conquer evil by doing good. And the last but not least, remain joyful or positive. And I'm just going to restate the verse, uh, James 1, verses 2 through 4 in the NIV. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we want to make sure that we are responding and showing up because basically we want to be able to grow spiritually in the Lord. We want to make sure that we are showing up in him in, the, in, um, in these trials and tribulations the right way, God's way. So we just talked about how to show up what um, trials are and all that. Now we're going to take a look at characteristics or even some results of trials. So when we think about that, we think of perseverance. We want to keep trying and having determination to move forward, even in the midst of difficulties. Romans 5 verses 3 through 5 in NIV states, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Another thing or a characteristic that we are looking at when it comes to trials is endurance. We want to keep having the ability to keep going or facing the trials for a duration of time. And so when we think, take a closer look at endur um, endurance, we're not just talking about five minutes here or 10 minutes there, or maybe a couple hours. We're talking about maybe weeks, months, even years. Are we able to endure the trial? Because that's the type of endurance that uh, they're, they're talking about in the Bible, James is talking about. That's the type of endurance that we should um, have. Steadfastness. Proverbs 4, verses 25 through 26 in the NIV. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet. So we want to be able to be steadfast, steadfast, and just look into God to be able to help us through the different trials that we're facing. We want to be able to make sure that we have strength when we're going through that. Not our own strength, but God's strength. We don't want to rely on our own strength, our own power, our own might, because if we're relying on our own strength or our own power, our own might, it's going to be hard to go through the trial. It may seem that we can, can make it through, but we can't. We have to be able to make it through through God's strength. I know we don't like this next one. Patience. That's right. Patience. I'm going to say it again. Patience. We want to be able to have patience when we're going through the trials. And a lot of times when we're going through the trials, we want those immediate solutions to happen at that time but we have to rely upon God's timing and we have to be patient because in the patience and having the patience, we're going through a learning stage. We're going through a process. Things take a process. And so we are going through things that we are learning about and we're going through things that's going to happen, going to eventually have us to grow spiritually and have us to grow closer to our Lord and Savior. We want to also be able to build our character because without that, we cannot go through the different trials and tribulations that we face. We want to also have faith and trust and know 
doubt. Romans 4, verses 21 in the NLT. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. So we want to make sure that we are fully convinced that we are fully persuaded that God will do a thing, that God will keep his promises. Even in the midst of trials, we may not see it, but he knows, God knows. And so because we know that he knows and we know that he has a promise for us, we are relying on the promise for whatever it is, for our health, for our finances, for whatever it is that God promised you. We have to make sure that we are standing fully persuaded and fully convinced that he will do a thing because in what he said is what he said. He is not like man that he will lie. He makes his promises. He is not wavering. He is consistent. He is consistent. And so we are just um, relying upon God because, because he's consistent, we are going to stand being convinced, convinced and fully persuaded that he will keep his promises because his promises are yes and amen. We also want to um, just think about hope. Hebrews 10 verse 23 in the NIV. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And so I know it was stated um, earlier by Jocelyn that even through the trials, because she was going through the trials, she still had that hope, even though she couldn't see it, but she still had that hope. And she still knew that God still had that promise over her life. And so because of that, it's a, little, it's a lot easier to go through the trials. We want to make sure also we have self-discipline, right? Self-discipline. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games that goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. And so when we think about all those characteristics about how or, or results of trials, how is it that we can show up or even have these characteristics, even in the midst of those trials, how can we still have joy? How can we still have joy even in the midst of those trials? Repeat that, please. How can we, going knowing that all those characteristics that were sh uh, shared, how can we still have joy? even in the midst of those trials, how can we? True joy. Or better yet, where can we find that joy? I want to take a stab at that answer, at that question rather. <laughs> All right, for sake of time, and so we see no jumpers, I will, um, I'll just kind of say, first of all, you kind of really listed it. It's, it goes back to that self-discipline. It got to start with us actively allowing the Holy Spirit to build these characters in us. Because um, if we don't, then we will continue to kind of respond out of our flesh. We'll continue to um, look at it from, from, uh, from just the situation and not from the fullness of it. So 
it is really, we, we're able to have that joy when we take the time to let God um, build in us. And then Jocelyn wrote in God's promise promises that he has a promise for our lives to prosper spiritually so we can lean into him for strength in those characteristics. So in other words, we know we got a promise from him. We know he's not going to tell us something that he's not going to also equip us to be able to do so we can trust and go back to the source, so to speak. He, he gave a promise. Let's go back to the promise keeper or the promise giver and then ask him to help us uh, to be able to walk in that consistent joy. And I believe that just that finding some way, some way, something to give thanks for, just moving to the gratitude page. Again, you know, typically the trial or the or the test or the or the tribulation is something that we didn't necessarily desire from our perspective. At the same time, there are God is still blessing in some way, either reminding you about the promise or sparing you from something that could have been much worse. There are things that we can move, you know, we have to intentionally say, okay, I, this is not what I expect. I don't even like it. God, God is big enough to handle that. At the same time, I'm grateful for X, Y, and Z. And thank you, Lord, for that. So that way you can start to act and move and behave your way into a new perspective. Because the option is, the other option is to stay stuck in the spiral, as Jocelyn said, the spiral downward and 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 not take advantage of the opportunity to learn to give thanks to to like what you what you shared evangelist tiffany to say i'm going to persevere and and god is with me he hasn't left me and i think that's part of the other part of that is kind of you you have to be able to have have your own history lesson so you know, you may be facing a trial, a new trial that you've never went through before, but you can go back and say, okay, Lord, you brought me through A, so I can trust you to bring me through B. You brought me through Z, so I, I believe you could bring me through D. So it's this thing of reminding ourselves what God, who God is and how he has provided and been faithful to us in past seasons to also help us to remember um, that if he took care of us then, that we could, we still have the ability to trust him um, even now. Um, so we all go through moments where we face trials that seem to test our faith in God and God's truth. How we respond to our trials is the key. How we face our trials is also the key. How our mindsets and our hearts posture is very vital. Do we let our emotions take over or do we rely upon God's truth when dealing with trials in our lives? What will we let dominate our thoughts, thinking, or even our mindsets when we are facing our trials? Will we let our fear override us or will we trust in God, his word, and his promises? Remember, God will never leave us or forsake us. And so um, a challenge from gospelgrace.com is to think through the themes, hardship, perseverance, and wisdom. Jot down some points to share from the following passages. What does God want us to know and do in the midst of trials? James 1 verses one through five, Romans five, verses one through five. I'm gonna put it in the chat as well, if you wanna be able to do it. And first Peter one, verses three through nine. How have the trials that you have experienced brought you closer to or pushed you further away from God? How have trials affected your Oh. Could you give those scriptures one more time? Uh huh. I'm going to um, put it in the chat. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Recording. Ooh, I don't want to get in trouble. Gospelgrace.com. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Ms. Tiff. Does anybody have any comments, any questions, uh, any thoughts based on today's lesson? Oops, wrong thing. Good lesson. Oh, uh, thanks. That's from Pastor. Jocelyn. Oh, okay. I agree. Good lesson. Great reminder to of, of the specific things that we can do when we face trials and pressure and how we can really try to access and center God so that we can have it even, even in the midst of, of you know, just trials and disappointments how we can still center God and be grateful, be thankful, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, get ask for his endurance and ability to persevere and, 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 you know, look to his Holy Spirit for support, look to his word for examples of how others have done it and how we have access to that same spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing, too, that I think was key, we didn't really talk about it, but when you use this, the, the example of um, Joseph and um, how you said, you know, even while he was in prison, God gave, gave him um, another gift, which was the interpretation of dreams. He, was, he went from just, just being the dreamer to then walking in the ability to interpret dreams. And so it's this reminder for us that even while you're in the midst of a trial or tribulations, that God is still elevating you. And I think sometimes we forget that because we going through, the enemy want us to see it as like God is, you know, God is not with us or that we're some, type, some kind of way going through because of something we've done. But it's this reminder that even as you go through, uh, when you're going through in your obedience to God, that he is still even elevating you in the midst of the thing that you are going through. So, so I think that's just a, a, a key point. Um, any other comments? I'll give everybody a moment. Did anybody else have any comments? You can put them in the chat or you can... Uh, um do that also if you have any prayer requests you can put those in in the comment um next wednesday on the 14th we're going to continue in this study from the book of james and we will be talking about the, the next lesson lesson two is the pressure of temptation um and uh pastor darla will be bringing forth the lesson for next wednesday on the pressure of um temptation so um, so that we just going to be a good roundabout as we say. So, um, so yeah, in terms of prayer requests, I just ask you keep me in prayer. This Saturday is my book launch. So I'm looking forward to, to that and just, uh, that the Lord would, would bless that. So that is my prayer request. Any other prayer requests, you could put them in the comment and Miss Tiffany will pray for us. Can you see the uh, comments, Tiffany? Um, I can voice I them. See, but he put Anne and then I don't know what else. Yeah. So he asked for his sister Alicia. Um, oh, my, okay. Healing from surgery and his niece, Asia. Okay. So those were the only requests. So you can. Oh, 
have uh, praying for deliverance, praying for deliverance, deliverance for his oh. for, for my niece Asia. Okay. Yeah, deliverance from addiction. Okay. Amen. Okay. So, I, do you want me to um, start? Yep. Okay. All right. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you, Father, for just being Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We thank you, Father, for just this time that we just got uh, through having the Bible study, talking about different trials and tribulations, Father. We thank you that you are going to just continue to be with us, Father, because you have never left us or forsaken us. We thank you, Father, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of tribulations, that you are with us, that you are our stronghold, that you are our strong tower, that you are continue to meet our very needs, and that in the trials and tribulations, that you're going to keep up, keep us to have our joy up, Father, that we are going to get our joy and our peace from you, Father. We're going to get our strength from you, our endurance from you, our perseverance from you. We thank you that this was a time for us to just um, talk more about trials and tribulations and just uh, hearing about your word, Father. In all of it, Father, we thank you that you're going to continue to have us to stand on your word for each and everything, for everything in our lives. And also just standing in prayer for Pastor James, for his sister Alicia, Father. I thank you, Father, that you are the healing bomb, Father. You are the ultimate healer. I thank you, Father, that you are healing her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. I thank you, Father, that she will have a speedy recovery. I thank you that she uh, will be um, healed, Father. She's already healed from that surgery that she had. I thank you, Father. I command that she will walk forth into her healing. In Jesus' name, I command that she will have a speedy recovery in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that because you are the healer, Father, that she can just continue to just look to you for her healing, look to you for her strength, look to you for her comfort, Father. I thank you, Father, for those things. I also just stand in the need of prayer for Pastor James' niece, Father Asia. I thank you, Father, that you, Father, are a great, not only a great healer, but a great deliverer, Father. I thank you, Father, that you are just delivering her from whatever addiction that she is having, Father, that you're wiping it out of her system from her, the taste out of her mouth, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that she will be complete, that she will be whole, that she will be saved, and that she will know that her identity is wrapped in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command that deliverance go, go, go forth in Jesus' name. I command that she will be healed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that there will be a turnaround, Father. We're just trusting you and having faith in you, knowing that you will do a thing, Father, and that all the promises that are over her are yes and amen. I thank you, Father, that you are just continuing to have people to just pray for her and pray for her fervently, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you have people standing in the gap for her, Father, and that each and every one of her needs will be met that she will not feel like she's alone, that she will not feel like she's just alone in it, Father, but you are with her, Father, and yet you will continue to love her, Father, and you will continue to just be there for her. I thank you, Father, that you will have, you will continue to have people to have that love and support for her, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that each and everything, it is so. We declare and decree that healing will take place. We declare and decree that strength will take place. We declare and decree that each and every one of your people that's on this live right now, this Bible study, that they will continue to walk forth in their healing, whatever it, whatever it is, Father. You know what each and every person stand in the need of, Father. I thank you, Father, for the healing that's taking place, that the growth that's taking place, that you, Father, are our matchmaker, that you, Father, are our strong tower, that you are, Father, that you meet each and every one of our needs and that we don't have to want for anything because we have it all in you and we have it all in your word. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for this moment, learning about trials and learning about tribulations. Help us to walk it out and not just be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
All right. Well, everyone have a good night. Bless you and see you, the Lord willing, on Sunday. Well, for those that's coming to my thing, see you Saturday. <laughs> good night. All right. Bye-bye. All right.